Just What's going on, guys? And welcome to the uh, newest episode of the After Hours podcast. Uh, today, we have a very special guest, OP Trader. Uh, his name is Olivier, which I just learned is really hard to pronounce, but I think I got it. <laughs> <You laughs> so, got thank it, you for you coming on. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for coming oh, on, man. Bro. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm excited. I'm excited to finally oh, yeah. meet you guys and talk to you guys. We usually chat on main I... chat. Yeah. So, to be part of it, thanks for the invite, man. No of course, brother. It's it's so funny. Like we talk to each other like all the time on like main chat, but like putting a face to the name is like such a different thing. It's like it changes the game. It's it's cool. That's and, why I love these. Well, podcasts. I put my picture there, you know. So I yeah, mean, exactly. So just to be, you know, to put a face to the person typing, at least you know who you're talking to, you know. So you could be catfishing us, though. You could be like some like ninety-eight sure. year old woman on there. We never know. <laughs> we never know. For real. <laughs> <laughs> man, <laughs> never know. probably probably <laughs> so anyways yeah, man. man so i guess we'll dive right in but so now i guess our first questions are uh how long have you been trading um how did you get into it and like kind of how did you get into mic all right well i've been trading on and off since 2015 so i was working full time and I was learning trading, you know, I was reading, reading everything I could find, like books, um, online videos. I was learning about swing trading, investing, but day trading, <laughs> I started doing it last year, early 2020, um, because I found out um, when I was working full time, I'll, I'll be taking some swing trades and I'll be making money, but I might just leave for a moment and then I was trading on my phone and my account will be cut in half. And I'm like, yo, what yeah. the hell? And then, <laughs> man, the stress. I was like, I cannot trade on the phone. I mean, I cannot do it. So slowly but surely, I, I saved up. And then I signed up for Tim Sykes Challenge last yep. year. It was a waste of money, man. I mean, no disrespect, <laughs> but good. I, didn't, I mean, I learned some stuff. But man, as far as process, nothing. You know, I was depressed. I was like, man, what are you doing? Like, you wasted all that money in this program and you're not even making it back, you know? And then one night, late, depressed, just going to YouTube, I found Bao, man. <laughs> yeah, that, was like, that, that was like an Asian god, bro. You dude, just find him, you're like... <laughs> and everything changed. I mean, it's... I used to hear about him in the community, modern work, this guy, modern work, modern work, but I never knew who he was, what he looked like, but I would hear about him. And then one night I just typed modern work on Twitter, on YouTube. And then the first video I found was him ranting. And he was, <laughs> he was talking about everything I was feeling, man, about how, you know, um, people are getting, you know, messed up in the industry. You know, they are losing their money. People are following full rules, getting yeah. dumped on. And that's what I've been doing. And, and ever since I, I didn't stop, I just listened to everything he said, man. I listened to every single video of Bao on YouTube, every single one I can find. I even created a playlist. I still have them. I listen, <laughs> listen, listen. And then there was like uh, last year, 2020, December, 2020, there was like a deal for like a discount yeah. for Christmas. So I got the three months, I got the quarterly. And I didn't stop since then, man. I just kept learning, Jeez. learning, learning. I mean, I listen to Bao every day, for real. That's like, awesome. His videos, he's, I've watched all of them. Profit. He's yeah. a, he's every a profit, single video. <laughs> and then I started making money. I would get some nice trades, man, good trades. And then I would lose it all. <laughs> I would get yeah. some good trades, lose it all. Good yeah. trades, lose it all. And then I found out it was, it was deeper than that. I mean, learning the techniques, is not enough. There's something wrong on my end personally. I need to fix, and it was my mentality. Um, I'm a fighter, man. I mean, I fight. I mm -hmm. train martial arts. I never give up. So taking a loss wasn't natural for me. Like I want to make it back. I want to fight. Like I, I'm not. I'm not accepting it. And I, that's what was messing me up. So I had to sit down with myself, man, and be like, Yo, you know how to trade. I mean, you see the setups. You know where to enter. Yeah. You're just not disciplined. So I went dark. I didn't chat. I didn't post anything in, ch in, ch in chat for like three months since June. And I just worked on my mentality, man. Discipline, yeah. um, risk management, everything. I worked on it. And then I've been trading consistently since. And then I'm back in chat. <laughs> yeah, Dude, that's badass. Some shorts. Yeah, man. That's badass. But, 
but the habits still show up here and there. The fighter, he wants to fight, but I'm like, yo, I, I need to find a way to control him. Yeah. But yeah, but that's pretty much it. That's where I'm at. Um, yeah, the goal that. is just the goal. Initially, what attracted me to trading was the, you know, the financial freedom, like to make it quick. But if that's what attracted you, that's a, that's not what's gonna keep you here, man. I mean, you need to fall in love with the process. Yeah. And I know everyone talks about process, but process is everything, man. I mean, it's who you are, like how you wake up, how you go to bed, how you think, how you act, how you plan your trades. I mean, how you find yeah. your trades, how you mitigate your risk, everything, man. So you need to work on mastering that. I mean, that's my goal, mastering my I process and then the, the profits take care of it, man. <laughs> I, just I think something that. key to note, Hey, before you go here, I just want to read this. Your your bio on uh, MIC, which I love, is keeping that white belt mentality in my trading process. A black belt is a white belt who never stops showing up to practice. I just wanted to read that because I think that's a badass quote. Yeah, like, yeah, I think sure. that's real good. Dude, that's I learned awesome. that from I learned that from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I love that, dude. I it's like, that. man, for every nine, every ten people who signed up for a Jiu Jitsu class, only one would be a black belt because yeah. of how hard it is. You want to learn how to fight, but dude, the struggle, the showing up, the pain, the aches, the injuries, only the love for it will keep you going. So I applied it in trading and I'm getting some results from it. So it's, it's amazing. So fucking true. I love that. But Harry, go ahead. Man. Sorry, uh, you, you mentioned kind of taking this, this like little break from um, trading and, or not from trading, but from, from the chat and, you know, yeah. kind of working on yourself and like spending some time with yourself, which I think is really key. Cause like I've done similar things as that as well. Um, maybe you could kind of go into detail a bit of like, kind of like what you did, like, was it just like maybe like walking and listening to music or was it like exercising or, you know, like how did you kind of go about that process of really kind of working on your discipline, working on yourself, just taking that time to really become the best trader and really person that you can be. Okay. Um, all right. So to martial arts, I'm disciplined in that aspect. I mean, I know how to wake up, eat clean exercise and all that, but it wasn't translating in my trading. I was stubborn. I mean, it was deeper. It was, it was a belief of never quit, like never, never accepting defeat that was hindering me, man. Like I would take some nice trades, you know, and I wouldn't feel comfortable and be happy with what I had. Yeah. because I stopped out and I'm like, man, I need to make this. I, I mean, I need to get it. And it would mess me up, you know? So what I did was I had to sit down. I mean, I talked to myself. I mean, I'm very deep into mental stuff, you know, visualization a meditation, but I really talked to myself. Like, I'm like, yo, you know how to trade. I mean, you're learning it. You're seeing the setups. You see what's working. You see the probabilities, you, you get it. But you're stubborn, man. I mean, if you fix this, I mean, I tracked everything. I tracked, I tracked my my wins, my losses, and yeah. the losses are all done from being stubborn. Yeah. So, what I did was that I went back to my trades. I see what I was good at, what I was bad at, and then I see what made it bad. So I I wrote it down, and then the first thing I did was to talk to myself, man. And there's a way to talk to yourself. I mean, it's like a child. You cannot be hard on him, on your mentality. You cannot be like, yo, you suck. Like you cannot do that because yeah. naturally you, you want to fight back. You'd want to resist. So I had to tell myself, yo, just do it slowly. Like, you know, if you have to take the loss, it's okay. There's always another setup coming up. Like, it's fine, man. I mean, just take this, you know, it's fine. Even if you lose, did you trade well? Then if you traded well, then it's a win. So I had to reframe the the mindset of defeat losing into a mindset of yo it's not a loss it's an opportunity it's not a loss it's one of the probabilities that it didn't that it wasn't gonna work yeah. because my setups are like 70 80 percent of the time they would work so that might be the 20 percent it didn't work so it's okay as long as you traded it well it's fine man so i kept doing that I kept doing that i kept telling myself yo it's okay and before i take a trade i talk to myself man i'm like is this a good entry is it then okay did you plan it what would bow do here what would alex do here yeah all right are you oversized are you stressed out if you're stressed out reduce your size man like you have to you're too big and then yeah so i talk to myself and then when i get a good trade 
I congratulate myself. I'm like, yo, you did a good job, man. Keep doing that. And then over time, <laughs> over time, I started yeah. like getting confident. But there's a, there's like a trap there. I was I was getting confident, and then I would take a loss <laughs> because I was like, yo, I get it, I get it, I get it. You know, shit, I get it. And then the next day, boom. So I had to go back, <laughs> get back to it, man, get back. So it's a process, man. Just having the process in trading is not enough. You need to have a process in your life, you know, yeah. as a trader. Because I look at it as a, as a high-level athlete, you know, like a champion. They don't just show up and fight, man. They eat, they sleep fighting. They, they, they are champions, man. Like they... They work on their minds. When they show up to the arena, they either like listen to music, anything that get them into the mindset to start, you know, their performance. So it's all in the mind for me, man. I mean, I the that. setups we can you can learn them, but the mind is what's gonna either make you or break you in this. So and I learned it, and I had to figure out who I was as a trader before I could even get some consistency in this because this is like the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Real. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I mean, it, I can already tell this is actually like one of my favorite episodes because I think yeah, I, I think a lot of trade I, I think a lot <laughs> of traders dude have such a negative mindset of trading. Like if they know it's what they want to do, but like they approach it so wrong. Like they fuck up, they beat themselves up, they like just they just have this kind of like tornado of emotions all the time. And you seem like super like I don't want to say Zen, but like that's what you, you seem like super in control of that. Like, is how did you get like that? Was it just from like fighting, or is it like something in, like before fighting? Like, how did you get to this level of like self recognition too? It's very impressive. Um, man, life, <laughs> getting beat up, yeah. knowing like, yeah, knowing like you're okay, you know, um, you're here, you know. There's always someone worse than you. Um, I mean, I don't want to go into too much personal stuff because where I'm from, yeah, no. it's very, it's rough. You know, it's a very poor country. Yeah. And for me to even be here, it's a blessing. Yeah. And oh, yeah. for me to even to even try to learn trading and to find my mentors, you guys, you know, Bao, Alex, it's not, I cannot take it for granted, man. So I need to put in the work. I need to, I need, I cannot waste this gift, you know. Um, as far as the mentality, I mean, I've always been like this, man. I mean, I'm, I'm stubborn. I mean, if I want something, I'll just, <laughs> yeah. I'll either hit, hit my head onto the wall until I figure it out or get humble enough to find like a simpler way to figure it out, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. I've been like this, man. That's who I am. I fucking like love that, bro. I love yeah. that, bro. Hey, <laughs> I just kind of, uh, I wanted to kind of pivot over to the kind of like, uh, you know, going about like your process and the types of setups that you like to trade now. All right. Because I think a lot of people who are struggling and who aren't consistent, um, they're, they're trading a lot of kind of random stuff, you know, like one day they're pre-market longing, the next day they're shorting at reversal hour. They're just kind of, you know, bouncing around, you know, using the MIC strategies, but like to get really good at something, you know, you have to put some time in. And I know a lot of people will be wondering like, you know, what worked for OP, you know, what worked for this guy? How's he, how's he consistent? You know, how's he pulling gains? So you know, maybe we could okay. kind of pivot into your kind of process and the setups that you like. Okay. Um, well, it was a process. I had to go to all of them. I tried long. I tried, I was afraid of shorting, man. I was like, man, I can blow up quick. Yeah. <laughs> I never shorted. I never shorted. I was, I was using E-Trade. Just give me some longs, man. Longing pre-market, longing yeah. at the open, longing yeah. getting dumped on. But I believe that's part of the journey, man. Um, but my issue was risk management. I was losing too much to figure out what was working for me. So by going to all those setups, like um, I was buying breakouts that I was, man, shorting, shorting parabolic setups, things squeezing up, yeah. not knowing where my stop is. Um, so I had to go to all that and tracking. You need to track. I mean, you need to track your setups. You need to track everything you do. So at the end of the day, I review yeah. everything I do. I'm like, what worked? I keep what didn't work. I don't even look at it. I just keep doing what working. Yeah. And eventually I found out that most of my gains were coming from broken stocks in pre-market yeah. and bouncing, shorting on bounce. I had a very good feel for that. And channel trading during the law, 
I'm good at that too, but most of the bulk of my money comes from like shorting broken stocks and low hanging fruits. Yeah. Um, the first bad day is one setup I'm tracking um, to get used to, but I haven't had it in my playbook yet, but that's something I'm learning. Yeah. Um, so to figure out what works for me is tracking. You have to, I went to all of it. I've lost on all of them. Yeah. And by tracking what made the most and what I was more comfortable in, I just stick with it. I just stuck with it and got rid of the rest. I can get the rest later, you know, yeah. first bounce and all that. So yeah, that that's kind of what I did as well with longing because like with longing, I know what types of setups like I'm, I'm good at. Um, and like me and James and I have talked about this like multiple times, but you know, you kind of find what you're good at and what kind of works for you. And then it just becomes kind of a process of just eliminating everything out um, that you're, that you're bad at. Right. You know, like, yeah. If you're, you, you know, you're shorting a broken stock, you're not going to be like, oh, let's, let's short this hot chick pre-market, right? You know, but um, I think that there's also like a thing and like I talk about this a lot where like shorts love to, that kind of like attention and that kind of like, you know, top picking and whatever. But if you can just short the broken stocks, like you can pull super, super consistent gains instead of just trying to be the hero, trying to top tick, trying to get that very top of the parabolic. And yeah, it looks cool on Twitter. But like, you know, for your for your growth as a trader and like as far as like keeping your trading account alive, it might not be the most sustainable thing, you know. Oh, yeah, for real. And one thing that helped me a lot was I don't post p and yeah. I don't because like the same thing I put in my profile, like keeping that white belt mentality. It's like I know how I was as a beginner, man. I mean, I would see those guys posting big profits and I would make my little like 50, whatever, 100. And I'll be like, man, I would feel depressed. Yeah. that I'm not living up to those guys. I mean, and then that's why I don't post, I post my charts because I know how it made me feel, man. He put, he put me in a wrong mindset to try to chase profits. And that's the yeah. wrong thing. You cannot be chasing profits. I mean, you cannot, you need to take what your strategy, your process is giving you. Um, that's it, man. Yeah. Um, that's why Alex, I look at his p &L, I mean, I check it just as motivation. Be like, all right, man, that's where you can go. Yeah. But I don't let it affect me at all. It used to in the past. So when I went dark last, I cut all of that. I mean, I just yeah. just focused on me completely. And yeah, and that was the result. I think man. a lot of new traders, man, they get they get intoxicated with like profits and they they see others PLs, but like they don't know. And I think what what guys forget is like they don't know what that person went through to get there. You know, like yeah. like Alex has been trading a long time, dude, eight years, and like, you know, two or three of those years, like they were just like normal days and stuff like that. And just, he took, we talk, he talks about it all the time, like all the losses he's taken to learn to like what he teaches all of us now with bow is like, you know, like people don't see that stuff. They see the fucking, the nice car. They see like all that shit, but like everyone has that struggle. So I think that's a really key lesson to remember. Like, like that's why like I post PL a lot now because like, I think people should remember too. It's like, you should be proud of, of where you are in your process even if it's small right now, like, don't let that, like, this isn't like a uh, fucking dick beating contest, you know, or whatever. It's, this is like, <laughs> it, this is like, just you show up, dude, you trade your process. And like, I like that you just kind of put your head down and you're like, this is what my process is giving me right now. And like, this is what I can get to, but like, I'm not yeah. rushing it. I think that's really, really important. Like, and, and so I guess my question now is like, where, how has your trading been the past, you know, a couple of months, you said it's consistent, but I guess what's been, What's been your your best strengths, and I guess what are your weaknesses right now? All right, my best strength was to stock selection. I found that I was yeah. getting better when my the stocks that I was watching they were on Alex's watch list and yeah. Yeah. Tom's watch list, and the levels I was looking at were the exact same. I'm like, all right, that's Love a that. progress. I mean, that's that's yep. deep. And then, um, what I'm working on. Let's see. I'm, I'm working on a few things, bettering my entries with more size, because I find like I usually either get like up to half size or never get full size, which is yeah. hard to do, I guess. Yeah, and I know how to pick my exits. I mean, I found I, I have a strategy for that where I can, because from tracking, I know where to expect the, the setups to go oh, yeah. because I track all of it, man. I mean, I have like sheets there. Um, so I can pick my exits, but it's the entry that I get FOMO sometimes. 
Yeah. So that's something I'm working on for real, like the FOMO side. But a video that I saw that really, really changed my my mentality this summer was from a what's his name, a Mark Douglas. He wrote yeah. like the Discipline Trader. Mark Douglas. Yeah. Oh yeah. And what he said was to think in probabilities. I don't think in terms of in terms of setups if they're gonna work or not anymore. I think of okay, if I take this setup 20 times, 14 out of 20, I will be profitable. But I don't know which one of those 14 is gonna be. Yeah. It might be this one or it might be this one, but I don't know. So I cannot be attached to the outcome of any single trade. Yeah. I just need to take it and yeah. accept the risk. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. really changed my mind, man. I was like, yo, once I got that, I just attacked. I attacked. I mean, I see my setup, I attacked it. Yeah. I lost, it's okay, it's part of it. So yeah, that that changed, man. That really, really changed me. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that is, that's really key because like, you know, I obviously work with like a ton of long traders. So like, it's not like we're like DMing a bunch because like I long and you short, but um, you know, there's a ton of people who are, who are longing and they're like, because the stock is easy to borrow, it has to go up and the ticker will be broken, beaten down, you know, an absolute shit ticker and, you know, just way under VWAP. And I'm like, bro, just because it's easy to borrow does not mean the chart is right. Does not mean the distance from VWAP is right. Does not mean we're getting enough volume for this thing to even run. And when you have those kind of like probability conversations, like, like, how does this paint the picture? How do all these things add up? When you have that kind of conversation with people, I think their eyes open a little bit because they're like, shit, man, I thought because it was easy to borrow, you know, we were going to get this big spike. And yeah, easy to borrow stocks. Generally, they do trap, but you're always going to get that. Like you said, one out of 14 or whatever, that doesn't work or two out of 14 that doesn't work. Right. And yeah, yeah, I think that that's definitely a big point and key because we've seen a ton of like hard to borrow stocks run as well. Right. We went through that yeah. like little hard to borrow sector where if it was hard to borrow, we'd get these spikes all the way up and like they'd be sustained a little bit and then they'd go back down again, right? So anything yeah. can happen in this kind of market. So um, in the, the pumpers, man, I mean, those guys, whew, those guys, just, <laughs> it's another level. I mean, I've never seen it like that. This is like something else, man. So you need to be aware yeah, of that. Easy, bro. Yeah, yeah. Good, so. I, think, I, think, I think new traders, especially as a short, I, I think this is like, I think a lot of things that like we've talked about in the past, like a lot of like struggles, like they really focus on like longs too, but like with shorts, like I think the probability idea is so huge because you know how many DMs I get, they're like, why did you short VWAP? And I go, well, I mean, probability is like, you know, nine times out of 10, it's going to reject VWAP here on this kind of setup. And the one time it doesn't, I'm going to stop out. And I think as a short, it's scary because the idea is the stock can continue to go up. Same thing like when you're shorting a bounce into a broken stock. How did you feel confident to size into this line? How did you feel confident to do this? Yeah. Because it's probability. And I think I think newer yeah. traders, like I like that you, you've hit a lot of good points. And I think that that is really key too. Just everyone's so scared to try a setup that they know works. But if you know it works nine times out of 10, like if you go to a, a casino and you sit at a roulette table and you know nine times out of 10, number 45 is going to hit. I mean, you're going to probably bet 45 every time. Like you're going you're gonna to make the bet. Yeah. The one time it doesn't, fuck it, whatever. But yeah. I, I really like that, dude. I, I love your mentality, dude. That's, you're a fucking badass. That, that dude, shit, but at the same, ass. I mean, I get, I get the newbies, man. I get the beginners. For sure. Because For sure. there's one thing you cannot teach in its experience. Yep. Dude, a lot of those things I'm talking about, I have to learn them through experience. Bao talks about them. You guys talk about it. But yeah. dude, if I didn't go to it, I wouldn't, it wouldn't stick the way it stuck, you know, because 100%. now it's a, it's a belief for me. Yeah. So I believe it. Before yeah. I learned it, but I didn't believe it. I was like, fuck, maybe it can bounce. But now I just truly believe it. So I just take it, you know? So, I mean, for a beginner, I would say just, yo, save your charts, man. Save your charts, review them every day or on the weekends when you have time to see the patterns so that when you see it, you just react. Um, and yeah, and just be patient, yeah, man. It. Don't rush it. Like. Shit, this thing is tough, dude. That's the toughest thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't even express it. It's so tough. Yeah. Yeah, but I hope the, the juice is worth the squeezing. And so, yeah. for real. Dude, I, w- 
I was gonna ask Harry like if he had any like last advice but I feel like that's such a good note to fucking like close shop on that was that was pretty solid I mean yeah you, man you, you, you hit some really good points and I think all new traders are gonna get a fuck ton from this I'm super excited for this one dude and I think yeah, I think you have a fucking a sick future like I seriously like it yeah he he hit us up before he said he was like kind of nervous to come on like i'm not gonna put you on blast like that but <laughs> but, uh, but dude you you've just given uh, the best interview by far that i think we've done to be honest i i fucking love this so thank you yeah. for coming on my man i i know we're gonna have you back at some point yeah man i appreciate it definitely man looking forward to it you know i spoke to you guys i see you guys in chat and you know let's keep following the process man because it works okay for real okay yeah. hell yeah All man right. let's wrap right. it